Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Ryan's Final Destination. I'm here tonight with my friend John Clauser as we talk about his DIY album that he made a um, little whiles back. So John's been on a bunch of the vid videos that I've done on the channel, and he's become a friend of mine. Um, showed me his music, and I really enjoyed it personally. So uh, we decided we were going to talk about it on the show. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon as well for tons of great exclusive content. Um, so, hey, John, how you doing? It's Monday. Let's do this, man. We're feeling good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I'm excited to talk about this album, uh, Reflections of My Life. Uh you sent me a copy of this, what, maybe like a month and a half back, two months, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and so then I got around to listening to it, liked it quite a bit, thought it was a pretty enjoyable album. Yeah. Um, and so we decided to talk about it. I mean, you know, this is pretty cool release from you because it's kind of like a little scrapbook of a lot of different times of life, it seems and uh little songs that you wrote over time so it's just a it feels like a very personal type of album and that's why i wanted to have you on and talk about it um yeah you know i want to i just want to mention this is probably the first time anybody has actually asked me to talk about my songs and stuff so this is this is completely new territory for me so and i really appreciate this this is this is gonna be a fun time oh absolutely wow. i'm excited yeah, so when did you have the idea to put this together? So I've always wanted to put a CD together or do a CD. And mm -hmm. it just was a matter of, you know, time. You know, do I go back to the studio and just, you know, find studio time to record? You know, who do I pl have play with? So, on, you know, most of what's on here, this spans over, gosh, 20 five 27 years of various times and recordings <clears throat> so um a matter it's just a matter of time of just saying okay here's i can you lock can you just squeeze me in to do this little demo just so i've got something to to mess around with you know mm -hmm. and that's pretty much mo what most of this is there's a couple songs from a coffee house um outing that i did you know one song i recorded but literally on my iphone and i just rip the audio from it <clears throat> and then there's a couple songs that you know if for anybody who's watching this you see this uh uh this was the name of the band i was i was in for about a year and uh we it was just a short time you know and i play there's a few songs i i, I included those just because i play on them and i thought yeah that's just another little piece of my life but i don't really spend i don't i didn't really write much of anything with this you know maybe a little snippet of music here and there but but it's always been something i've wanted to do i had enough recordings and i thought you know what i wanted i'm gonna do something that i can just give to some folks that are i've come to be good friends with if you know in family as well and i just think you know this would just be just say this is a piece of me do with it what you want you know i i can't honestly say i've gotten a ton of feedback on it from folks, you know, I, I'll, I'll probably get a few people say, oh, yeah, I thought it was really nice and yada, yada, yada. But I've never really had anybody like really sit down with me and say, hey, you know, this was this was really good. This was, a, you know, something like that. Now, I do have a couple people, other friends that that have been more selective and have wanted to talk more about it. Uh, one of which hopefully will pop up in some comments later on. But uh, anyway, um, so it, the, the idea has always been there. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, just was a matter of just doing it. So. Excellent. So I guess going back even a little bit further. So when did you like first get into writing songs in general? When I was in, gosh, I want to say it was junior high school, maybe into 10th, probably ninth into 10th grade, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. Because I'd already been just standing in front of a mirror with until I started playing guitar in 1984, I would just play air guitar, you know, with a, with a, with my grandmother's cane or, 
or something like that. But I'd stay in front of the mirror thinking I'm like this big rock star and, you know, and stuff like that. And I don't know what, you know, I had a few lyrical ideas come along and I just started, you know, the, the ideas started to come lyrically. I didn't really write music with much, much of every, everything I wrote, just lyrics. But, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, gosh, if anybody saw any of those lyrics, they would laugh. They would probably laugh themselves to death because they were so bad. But uh, and and I have to be thankful that that notebook of lyrics just completely vanished. I have no <laughs> idea what happened to it. It like got lost in the move or something. But but thank goodness because there. I mean, oh, you could tell I was ripping people off. You know, I was copying either Metallica or Wasp or Kiss or Twisted Sister or whoever I was big into at the time, mm-hmm. Slayer and stuff like that. And lyrically, that's where I was going. But there was just oh, there was just. Once in a while, you you had a you had some good stuff, but boy, for the most part, yeah, not so much, <laughs> <laughs> not so much. But uh, so yeah, I mean, musically, I didn't get the. Now, I I will say I have a couple snippets on of on a cassette that will never see the light of day from like three old things I wrote, and it was just, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't yeah, I'm not even going to talk about. Them. But yeah, so but yeah, I so I wrote I wrote a lot of lyrics. Uh, once in a while, I got some music, uh, like the the one the ending song on this thing, "Sadist," which is probably the oof, that that one I wrote as a senior in high school, and it and you could tell you could tell I was a big Wasp fan, and that's where I took a lot of creative license from. <laughs> but I didn't record it record it until 1995. You know, I had a friend who had a little four track recorder and we just set up a drum kit and i had my guitar and the vocals and we just went for it you know and it's and you can tell it sounds awful but but um <laughs> it wasn't until um until like when i got to my i then i kind of i i got i got to where i graduated high school and then all of a sudden i dried up the lyrics weren't coming too quickly i just started working full time and i just didn't take the time to it um once in a while a good song would come and I felt like what I was writing in my twenties was a lot better uh, lyrically because I felt like there was good ideas and I wanted to roll with them instead of just writing stuff to write stuff. So, Um. so the first of those songs that comes to mind was one that I wrote in 1995 and it's the CD. It's the song that starts off this little CD called scars too deep to heal. Mm -hmm. Now, when I wrote this in 1995, I was going through the Dale Carnegie course, which is a course where it, it helps you with your public speaking. It helps you with um, just being able to, to have a good conversation. And there's certain talking points that helps you in your work situations and things like that. So it really helped me as far as that kind of and how I deal with people and how I talk to people. One night we had a night where we talked about stuff, you know, story. Their idea was to tell stories. And so we would have, we would tell these stories. And this one was about things that emotionally, like an emotional part of your life or something that happened to you. Now, some of these stories got pretty heavy. Some of them were really funny, but some of them got very, very heavy. You felt like you were on this, this roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. So, so you got to do, we got to do this and I remember the, the I, like the next night, I think I started lyrics just started coming to me about some of the stuff that I had heard, you know? So I took the idea, you know, this, the, the idea of the quiet darkened room and a, a girl sits alone, you know, that starts off the song and it just led into this, um, this relationship where it was, you could tell it was an abusive relationship and the girl finally snaps and she kills her partner or you know husband or whatever and so you know you get to the end of that verse and even though yeah the the cause of that pain is gone it's still going to linger because you still have the emotional trauma deal to deal with from from what he this person did to you Mm -hmm. um the second verse talks about a man who and uh, who talks about a man who who after he's done with his nine to five job 
he goes and he goes to the bar to get drunk because he just wants to forget the day, you know, and until he just goes too far and to a point where he he's certainly shouldn't be behind the wheel and he runs a family off the road in the in an accident he, the entire family gets killed and he walks away without a scratch you know so you have that kind of emotional trauma the last verse talks about um wartime you know and, and what it was like for to be a wounded soldier you know and you have you have those kind of issues and you know and and, and i had no idea that all these years later I had written a song about PTSD, never thinking about that, that as a term, even back then, it just was something that just came from my heart and came from my soul. The music would come later as I had a a 12 string, which I meant to pull out, but I didn't anyway. And I was messing around with a lot of Jimmy page type detuning and odd tunings and stuff like that. But so this one, I just Mm -hmm. tuned the, tuned the 12 string down to D and we just, I just was kind of playing around with um, some D minor position chords. And I just kind of go up and, and I kind of was using a little music theory with, with my thought. So there was a couple of chords in there and then I just went with that. And that's how the, that's how that came about. So, and then I started, I looked at the lyrics to that. And I'm like, Hmm, this actually flows pretty good. And so, that's how that came together. Um, in 1996, I got a chance to record the, the guitar, the vocal, and a very sloppy bass line just to have on there. About a year later, the drum parts came. Well, when the guy discovered the tape in his in his basement, and, oh, wow, he messed around with it, put the drum track on it, and there we go. So um, that's one that I hope to re-record one day. Uh, I've got a, mm-hmm. good, a good friend named Danielle, and... She is a great drummer. Um, she took this song and she just really made it. She really latched onto it because she she really related to that song. When that became apparent to me, it really it really kind of broke my heart, but it really made me happy to know that wow, my my music made an impact on somebody. So, and I told her it's like you know whenever I get to record re record this thing, you are the drummer on it, and. If I could have just seen her face, she'd have been like, she, I, I don't know if she would have been crying or if she would have been like, like the, the, the excited Kermit the Frog, you know? But um, anyway, so of all of my songs, that one I've probably have gotten a lot of talk about. So that's, a, that's very humbling to me because it made, it's because it makes such an impact on people. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's a, uh, I, I didn't mean to go that, so long on that one, but yes, yeah, that, that was, oh, uh, that's the, that's the gist of, of scars. Um, yeah. And it, it is a really beautiful song. I will say, I mean, it creates a pretty haunting atmosphere musically. And then, um, you know, the storytelling comes across really well. I, I would be curious to hear how it sounds with a, um, with a re-recording and stuff. Cause I think what you have, a, here already sounds very very good and it could only get better at this point it is and it's all and it's all analog i mean that was that was that was recorded on a on a two inch maybe not no i think it was actually recorded on a reel uh a reel to reel thing uh oh, wow. yeah yeah that's that's my that's my buddy danielle yeah she she did both <laughs> so she cried and and kermit flailed <laughs> 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 so yeah, so it, you know, so she was really excited, and, and you know, we have this dream that we're, you know, if Muscle Shoals will have us, that's where we want to do it. We want to, we want to, we're going to go big or go home. You know, we're, we're that's that's our that's our end goal for that one. So that's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, I look forward to hearing it one day. Yes, yes. So, Definitely. so go ahead. Yes. So. Would you say that that's the song that you're proudest of you wrote, you've written or that's on the album or is there anything I else? So. That... I think so. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of proud of, a, of, about all of them really. I mean, it's kind of hard to, yeah. it is kind of hard to pick and choose, but scars will always be that one because, because it's, be, it's so relatable to, to people, 
you know, yeah. a lot, I, I will say a lot of the songs that are on this, um, really, you know, it, for some people, it may be a turnoff that it's, they're, they're pretty much everything here is faith-based, you know, but that's just, that's just where I am after 1997, 1998, you know, that takes me to a different point in my life where, you know, I was in a dark time and I needed a, uh, I essentially just needed an intervention. <laughs> you know, I needed a divine intervention because I was on the precipice of trying to throw myself in front of a truck, you know, and, and end it all because I was really in a dark place. So, and I felt like God got his attention uh, with me and my focus changed. You know, lyrically, I was starting to write more songs about God and more praise and worshipy type stuff. So, you know, so I, you know, that, that's where songs like, you know, like here's my son would be the, would be one that would come up. You know, I started writing that in 2001, hit a dry spell and about a year and two months later, picked it back up again and then wound up performing it in an open field <laughs> later that day. But I didn't get to record that uh, until a few years later um, mm -hmm. with a guy named Todd. He lives up in uh, North Alabama or North Birmingham. And so, um, and, it, and I remember one thing he told me, and I hope he watches this video, Todd. You, you said to remember you when I got famous. So I hope this is the closest thing I get to being famous because <laughs> you helped me record that song. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so that was... You know, that was basically a, just a, a simple demo. Um, the song You, and, and stop me if you want to talk about any of these other songs, uh, if you have any other thoughts. Um, I did want to say, um, I think Here's My Son is actually my favorite track on the album. I think the chorus okay. on that one's gold. Um, nice. I think Thank I you. mentioned to you when I first listened to it, it kind of has... That chorus kind of has the same feel as that band Mother Love Bone from the early 90s. So kind of like an interesting, like grungy alternative feel. I kind of get that from that chorus. So I really dug that. Yeah. Um, especially with the layers of vocals that you had on it kind of has that cool type of feel to it. So, yeah, yeah I really enjoyed that song a lot. Um, I, I will and, say that's actually my wife's favorite song of mine. Really? Mm hmm. Yep. She likes she likes that one of, of of all of them. Yeah, it's I really dig that one actually. It's my favorite mm -hmm. on here for sure. Cool, thank you. Yep. And again, that's 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 all you know. Again, for anybody who's who's not a faith based type of person, you might not you may not appreciate it because it's it basically I'm just. But that's just where I was in my in my life and still am. You know, I, that's still a very big part of me. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was uh that was a fun one to to do and yeah, I I um so the next song uh you that one started off much slower than what you hear on the CD. Mm. Um originally I was really wanting to be I don't know, it kind of had it was it was the the key was it was originally in D and the guy that recorded it he was working with us in our kids ministry band and he said, let's try it in this key. And it was like, he was like, it was up to E. And then he was like, how about we speed it up a little bit? And I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> you know, and then we did the rework, the rework, the chorus and different stuff like that. And it, it came off sounding more like a Beatles rolling early rolling stone song. Yep. yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, exactly uh, what I thought stones when I started. I never would have thought that, but uh, you know, <laughs> My my buddy Sam Riley's on drums. Hey, God bless him because uh, he's had a he had a, a very he's had a very tough year this year, and so I, I got to give a shout out to him. But he he played the drums on that one, and um, he he did a great job with that. And the the guy who uh, Steve Wingo uh, plays bass on that one, and he he helped record it in his basement studio. So um, that one originally uh, just was something I was doing for the kids. You know, I wanted to do that one for uh, I wanted to write a song for the kids to sing. And that's, mm -hmm. that's how that came about. <laughs> that's awesome. Hard to believe that yeah. one's 15 years old, but, wow. um, so, uh, okay. 
So yeah. well, the next song on this is uh, on this is called is called "What Is Christmas to You." Yes. Again, this is another one that I wrote for the in sp- specifically for the kids ministry, and this one just came together like that. Everything just the the, the lyrics came, the melody came, the music came, everything just came so quickly. I threw it to the other band members. I threw it to the kids minister at the time. They were they were saying, "Do it." <laughs> let's let's rehearse let's let's jam on it let's see what we can do with it and i i would love to do a full band version of that at some point um one day i will but um it'll get there so yeah Ooh, i like i like what this i like what danielle just put out here sorry really goes to show that you never should throw away lyrics or pieces of music May take years, but it can still affect the people who need to hear it. Scars is an example of that for me. Yes. Absolutely. You know, absolutely is right. I've I have a song that I wrote in around a uh, 1999. And I I I've never recorded it, I've never performed it. Um, but it's a weird musically, it's really weird. <laughs> it's it, it's very moody, it's very atmospheric, but it's and there's one point where I have this like really thrashy breakdown, but it's um, I this, originally the song was called Father's Handed, but I've never I think I'm going to change it. I want to do something different with it. Um, but the song was about the, the a character in the Bible named Barabbas. You know, he was Barabbas was the man that, uh, you know, when pa, when when Pontius Pilate was was saying, you know, we'll give you Jesus. Or we'll we'll give you someone else. You know, how about you know everybody was saying Barabbas, free Barabbas. You know, so I was writing this song from Barabbas's point of view. He's sitting in the prison cell, wondering what the heck's going on. He's hearing his name being chanted. You know, and then all of a sudden he's being told he's free to go. What? You know, so that was that's kind of where I took that song. But it's like this really weird dissonant chord, and just it's just it's weird. It's <laughs> so weird. I don't even have a recording of it, but one day. I don't, I, to to show anybody, but yeah, it's uh, it's different. So one day, I'll, I, one day I'll I'll do that one. But <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, what is Christmas to you is probably the next one I would probably be the most proud of. Um, it's really it's, catchy. It is. I I I felt like it, it it stuck with the kids when they when they played with it and they sung it. And, um, but yeah, it's always been one I've wanted to do. And and Danielle, this would be another one I want you to play drums on. By the way. I think I, I think you know that already, but uh, yeah, uh, and it's 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 always been one I've wanted to do a full band version of, and because I have a lot of stuff I want to do with it. But, uh. Yeah, this is one for me on here that was really interesting to me. I'll say just because what I started off saying this felt like a scrapbook. This was like a really interesting one because it's very different than the other ones. Obviously, mm-hmm. there isn't anything else on here that's Christmas. But it feels very, very intimate and personal hearing it on here. And it's, um, yeah, I, I just really like that about the style of this album. And it kind of has a bit of a live feel to it, but this isn't recorded live, right? It's, it's this, no, this one was, this was in a, a like a, yeah. like an office studio kind of thing. It feels kind of live though, even though it isn't in some ways. And I mean that in a good way too. I enjoy mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But, um, now there are a couple of live songs that are on this. Um, yeah, I think we're coming up to them now, right? Yes, one of them is called "Children," which that was basically just that the, the lyrics just kind of came out of uh, um, just having gone to Venezuela for a mission trip, and we just just experiencing what I experienced there, kind of sort of, um, and uh, just kind of how I felt. You know, kinda, well, what when you see these kids, you know. Um, I got. I need to pull the lyrics back up here. So, you know, when I when I sing the chorus, children laughing, children crying, children playing, children dying. Which one is more concerned to you and me? Whether grown or just a babe, it all appear. It it, it applies to all, no matter the age. The kingdom belongs to children like these. I mean, when I think of I think of a moment when I was in Venezuela and we were on the we were on the bus to head back to where we were, where our hotel was, and we saw this young child crying. He could have been about 18 months to two years old or whatever. And, you know, we were just being the silly tourists and we were waving. And this, this, uh, this guy who was out there with this, with this young kid 
know, we saw them crying and he, he hoists the baby up and he kind of does this motion. It's like, here, do you want to take him with you? And we were just like, whoa, what did we just see? <laughs> you know, so it's, you have this poverty of where they where these kids were, but then you have a lot of children who, you know, they're, they're, they're born in, you know, they're, they're like a lot of us in the United States. They're born into something comfortable. You know, not everybody has that. So anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, so that, it, that was like one of the few times I've ever played that song live. I've hardly ever performed that one. Um, the next one, uh, is a hymn. It was my dad's favorite hymn. And I was very thankful that he was there that night to watch me or to hear me play this. Um, it's just, it's a called just a closer walk with thee. Um, and I wanted to do it for him. And, uh, at the end of the song, I tack on a chorus, which I think on your version, you get the full song, uh, called nine, six, 90. So what nine, six, 90 was, was something I wrote back in, in 1998. And it was for a, my high school sweetheart that I was, that I had dated for a couple of years. Um, her thing was though, she had a plastic anemia and it was, you know, which for those who don't know, it's a bone marrow disease and she needed a lot of transfusions and she had a lot of medical problems. We would eventually split up because she knew at, at the time I probably was not emotionally ready for what was coming. And that was 1988 and about less than two years later, she passed away, you know? And so nine, six, 90 was the day she passed away. The song is essentially our story. And so that really became the most personal, probably the most personal song I've ever written. Um, and um, I, I would love to kind of put mess with it, but I'm just like, I can't. I, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't do, I can't mess with, I can't modernize the lyrics to this. There's just no way. But the chorus yeah. was what, what, what grabbed everybody. It'll be good to see you again in a place where you're hurting body mends. And, um, you know, the angels in heaven were blessed when you arrived. It'll be good women. It'll be good to see you again. I don't even know the lyrics to my own song. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Anyway, um, it'd be good to see you again in a place where you're hurting body men's and to watch over those that still survive. I mean, it's just, that's, it just basically is you're reminded of the people who have gone before you and mm -hmm. you hope and you're, and you pray and your faith tells you that one day you hope you, to see them again. So that's where that song comes from. But it's, it's, it's for me, that's just a very personal song for me. So, yeah, I honestly like, I didn't pick that up from just listenings, but you know, that was already a beautiful song. It gives a whole lot more context now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Really powerful stuff there. I mean, I love how you had those live live tracks on here just because once again, it shows a different time. Like if you ever re-recorded this or something, it'd be really neat if you still kept like live sounds in it. For certain tracks kind of yeah. like keep it in this because it's just like it does add a really cool um i'd say like contrast to what we've had before on it mm -hmm. yeah it's it's funny because i i have a couple of other songs that um i had written that i performed that night but for whatever reason i didn't like how they sounded and so i never ripped the audio from the video so i could so i could have a recording of them and, uh, and mm -hmm. one of them was actually a song that I wrote for my wife and I wrote it before I even met her, which is interesting. Wow. Um, it's a song called, um, it's a song called across the miles. And, um, it's funny. I was going through a little journal and wow. this is actually my original lyric sheet. For when I wrote that song across the miles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I even dated when I wrote it. It was October 14th, 1999. So I still have this. So it, it basically was a song about, you know, um, just, you know, finding love over the internet was really what it was about. 
and just how people it brought two people together you know and and here it is now uh you know we just celebrated our 22nd anniversary a few days ago so uh you know we're still hanging in there but i just didn't like how the recording sounded so i i i didn't do anything with it i really because that's i haven't played that song and i haven't played that song since that night so i really need to dig that one out again and touch it up some more that that had a country feel to it so Mm. so there you go but that's that's a little bonus bonus history there (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) yeah 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 but um sorry i'm gonna get another quick drink of water if you've got something uh, else throw out there sorry yeah no just i i mean so far the tracks we've talked about i just love how they each tell a different story i mean you have you're pretty interesting lyrics honestly they are very um honest and personable and emotional which is always a good thing i mean we just did the whole u2 series which is full of honorable lyrics and oh yeah so i guess it's it's good when people can relate to your music and like definitely some of these songs i was feeling that with them mm-hmm. yeah and i appreciate that and I- you know, and I would love it. It just means a lot to me when people tell me that. You know, it it means a lot when when folks like Danielle tells me the same thing, and and how she's like thinking of ideas of what she wants to play on certain songs if we ever get a chance to re- record more of them and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, it's it's just humbling to me. So I really appreciate it. I appreciate that. So yeah. But uh, um, as I as I mentioned, then the last couple of tracks are. I just threw the tracks on from when I was in a band, uh, Empire and Ruins. Um, the four songs, they're very much a New York hardcore style um, with me trying to bring the metal a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, some of the riffy stuff you hear in any lead guitar playing, that's me. Um, otherwise, it's just me. It's it's just, you know, a couple of like four songs and they're all very short, you know, between two and three minutes and just kind of hit you in the face and run you know that's that's how the songs were but um i probably only played about i don't know 10 or 12 gigs with them we didn't play a we didn't really play a whole whole lot but um but uh you know uh it was it was it was fun but uh i it just wasn't where i was at i think mentally and musically and it, it wasn't where i was at at the time you know and i love the guys they're all good great they're all great guys but uh, I, I, it was just, a, it was just not a good. It was, a, it was probably the wrong time for me to have done the band at the time. So, yeah, I say with all that in consideration, though, you guys sounded pretty good. <laughs> well, I was, you. I was, I was rocking out up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what, the one song that that I called it all for you. I don't know what the other guys call it. I called it all for you. When someone heard that song and they were like. Hey, I'm really digging this. This kind of like a Slayer vibe. I was like, yeah. "Yes, <laughs> that's what I was aiming for." Because that that little BC Rich monster back there, that's what I used to record that those on. So, wow. uh, so that that was that was the guitar I used at the t- for those recordings. So, and that has a very dirty Slayery sound to it when it when when it's plugged into a like a line. Uh, my I have a Line Six Spider Two amp and. Man, that thing just sounds so nasty and dirty. But, um, but yeah, oh, we uh, we have the same kind of amp. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> cool. I like Definitely. I like the Spider too. I I haven't dug it out in years, but uh, but yeah, I I I, I like. I have a cab, I have one cab with it. And I don't know what I'll yeah. do with it. I never I never play out, so I don't know what I'll ever do with it. But eh, you never yeah. know. One day they do but, sound uh, pretty good. I've had the thing probably for like ten years now. It's yeah, good. well, that's for me. I got it in two. Well, I, when I was in the band, I got it for when I was in the band. So two thousand five, because I have a, I have a little Marshall, little practice amp, I guess. It was like a thirty watts solid state or eighty five watts amp or whatever. Yeah, that wasn't going to cut it for when we play live. There was just no way because you would it would just get drowned out. So yeah. I had to spend money I didn't have at the time to try and find something that would work. And that's what I did. So definitely. Yeah. So what made you, um, so what made you, so that stuff was in 2005, you said. 
the mm-hmm. heavier songs. Cool. So, um, I guess when you decided that you wanted them at the end of this album, I guess, um, where did you come to that conclusion? Like, did you have other acoustic stuff that you were thinking of putting on or no, pretty much every, everything, everything that's on the CD. That's, that's pretty much everything that I have a, a digitalized version of recording, you know, version of, of recorded. I don't have anything else I have. I would have to, I would have to take the time to, to record. And I just don't, I just don't have that. So, um, having, that's really all I had on in recorded version. Yeah. Well, I like the heavy stuff being at the end. It's pretty cool. I mean, I figured if I, people I figured if people can suffer through all the all the quiet acoustic y stuff and they get to that heavier stuff, then then they're well, maybe I'll win somebody over that way. Yeah, I mean I like both the acoustic stuff and the heavy stuff. I mean I'd say that the heavy stuff is more in tune with my typical listening, but Mm -hmm. I also really like the acoustic stuff as well, but that feels like concerts I go to and stuff, the stuff at the end of the album. So I really dug that as well. Um, Yeah. Although I do think I like the songs (laughs) at the beginning more as actual songs. Like I said, here's to you is my favorite on the album. And, Mm -hmm. um, but that heavy stuff is pretty sweet. (laughs) And I won't even talk about say this because it's just a bad recording, but. (laughs) <laughs> but the but the, the the problem there is when i went to digitize it i i wasn't really paying attention to what i was doing and i it, it just was so loud and i just had no way of going back to fix it i just didn't realize i didn't know if i could fix it and i just i never was able to so i i really need to get that probably more professionally digitized instead of <laughs> you know going at it the way i did it was just I have to forewarn everybody. When you get to that song, you got to turn your volume almost all the way down. Yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, I like it when one song have an acoustic. Oh yeah. Yeah. Danielle, that's actually, a, I, I wish I need to do that because I could do that with what, what is Christmas to you? Cause I actually do have a, a live recording of that when we did it with the kids. Um, I just didn't, I just didn't put it on the CD because I, I'm not totally happy with, the record it's it, it's it's not really good well recorded it was it literally was recorded on a digital camera <laughs> so mm. it's not you know it's not the best and the sound system in the room was awful so you can't you can barely hear the drums you can hear me and the kids and that's about it but you can't really hear much of anything else in the song so i didn't really feel good about putting that on there but uh, mm-hmm. so but uh but you know i want to make a I, I wanted to make a comment about about the um, this little cute guy you know <laughs> i was looking because i was thinking if i was calling it reflections of my life then i was like i need to find like a really old picture of me to stick in there and i thought this i'm like three years old three or four years old here i'm like really really young uh my brother took this picture my, my i have a brother he's 13 years older than me and a sister who's 15 years older than me so that's where i get a lot of my a lot of my musical tastes and stuff like that. But, but yeah, he took this picture. It was, he found it on a bunch of old slides. And so, uh, you know, I, I said, yeah, I'm going to use that as the cover just for fun. And then, uh, the back, this back picture, uh, my wife, Sabrina took this picture at a, at a park with this lake. And, and I, and I kind of wanted to this kind of this idea of, I don't know, just kind of pondering, looking, looking out to the, you know, just kind of looking around and just thinking about life, I guess you could say. So, but, uh, you know, I work at a UPS store, so I was, so I was able to print all these things up. You know, I, <laughs> I, I bought the labels to put on this, to, 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 to stamp on the CD. You know, I had the, I printed those up at the store. So it was, it was perfect, you know? So it was, it was a fun project uh, to, to do. And, and I'm glad people have gotten something from it. At least I hope people have gotten something from it. <laughs> but, Most uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate you sharing it with me. It's yeah. been cool to be able to listen to. I mean, I feel like um, being you and I are both musicians, being able to show each other our music. 
is a different way of like showing a bit of each other's like mm-hmm. in a friendship and stuff because i mean we could talk we can talk music and stuff but show each other our music that's a whole other experience that's that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of different and and then imagine the day if, if we could if if we could actually get together and jam together that would be really cool that would be epic so i agree i completely agree that'd be pretty sweet so yeah, so that that that's something to keep in the back of back of one's mind someday. So yeah, that would be that would be a lot of fun because God knows I could use uh, I, I would I'm always itching to jam with people. I just just finding the time, you know. That's yeah. the biggest. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, Danielle here. I mean, she lives she lives like about a half hour, forty minutes away. But it's like finding the time for us to get together and make to make it happen to actually just sit down and jam together for a while is is challenging you know it's just life just takes us in a lot of different places but uh you know we uh i i've she certainly has been known to get a few musical ideas i've thrown her away and a few i think she's even seen some lyrical ideas that i've kind of tucked away but um you know one day we'll one day i'll i'll take some of these bits and pieces and we'll make something new out of it or you know maybe when we do get to jam something new could come out God knows I haven't written anything really new in years. If, if and if something really struck that really hits the both of us, well, golly, I mean that would be fantastic, you know. And we we both hope that can happen someday. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, so uh, lots 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 to dream. There's a big thing. That's that's really where it's all, it's all about. It's just you. Know, it's 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 a dream that doesn't. It's 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 always there. And no matter how much life wants to try to kill those dreams, it's they're still alive and they're still there because I know there's people out there who want who feel deeply about what I've done and what they've heard from me. So, absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, I look forward to seeing whatever you do with this in the future. I mean, I look forward to hearing those re recordings when they come out and stuff. And, yeah, hopefully we'll get the jam sometime as well too. That would be Always that pretty. would be awesome. Definitely, that would be Always. awesome. Yep, that's what I love to do, just jam with people and stuff. But yeah, I mean, do you have any final thoughts about the album or anything else? With you, you know? know, really, I think I pretty much I pretty much covered it. You know, there's really not much I to really else to to throw out there. Um, you know, uh, I never, I never meant to make a buck off this for any reason. I just wanted to just share my life with friends, you know, friends and family and, you know, and, uh, I just would love, to, you know, if it sparks some interest, if it sparks the conversation, if I'm planting those seeds, you know, that, that's, that's the name of the game for me, especially with the context of a lot of my songs, you know, there's, there, uh, always always there to uh to uh plant some seeds and uh you know Dan- danielle's ready for you to come jam with her so <laughs> that's that's Sounds awesome good. we could do it man we could do it but uh yeah, you know bass I, guitar and drums i was about to say you know <laughs> I, i've talked about we've we've got it we've got the drummer for for scars you know i really do probably should get a decent bass player for the song so <clears throat> so uh <laughs> so you know just kind of throwing some softballs out there so uh no but uh so you know but yeah that would be that would be really cool someday but like i said once we we got to get we want to get the arrangements tight we want to see because our dream is to go to muscle shoals and and do it um i don't know what kind of fees and rates they'll do i don't even know if they would accept it you know, they may they may be pretty picky about what they'll take in to record. I don't know how studios are. You know, I may have to just do it at some smaller time studio. Who knows? I don't know. We shall we'll see. Make them an, we'll make them an offer they can't refuse. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, well, like I said, John, thank you for coming on and talking about this today. You are it's very welcome. Time. You were very yeah, well. I mean, thank you. 
glad to get a bit more context on the lyrics of some of these songs and they get to understand the stories more. It's been a powerful time. And um, yeah, I thank you. And then I also know that you have a channel as well. So if you want to plug it and yeah, what's going so on. we've, uh, so yeah, I've got, I've got a little, uh, my music corner. That's the name of my channel. Um, I've done a couple of uh, things here with Ryan. Uh, one was talking about love calma. The other one was, was, Iron Maiden opening list uh, or opening songs uh, favorites. Uh, I've done a lot of little bits and pieces of stuff here and there, whether it was, uh, you know, just different albums in my collection or, uh, you know, just um, odd stuff I just like to like to talk about. So, um, you know, I'm trying to get, uh, I've got some stuff in the works maybe for a couple of weeks from now, we might, I might get a, a few guys together. We might just have a little fun, just talk about some different things um you can see you've seen me probably on rock day dream nation grants rock grants rock warehouse of course on this channel uh i was on average joe's and and all or not with jack toledano both talking about SummerSlam with wrestling uh lp tremors you know with uh, with tyler and hopefully get to get back on here on there sometime soon you know contrarians of course that's where it all started um you know if it wasn't for the contrarians we wouldn't be having this conversation. So, True. you know, that's, that's how I, that's how I look at it. So thank you contrarians. And I got to thank Sia Tranquility because they, if it wasn't for Sia Tranquility, I would never heard of Martin Popoff or the contrarians. So. Yeah. So there you Ditto. go. <laughs> yeah, and then also, um, yeah, this is Ryan's final destination. It's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Patreon. Uh, tons of content about music and film. Make sure to like and subscribe and hope you enjoy all the content. Um, yeah, once again, this is uh, Ryan's Final Destination with John Klauser. We were talking about his album, Reflections of My Life. Thank you again, John. It was a great time. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Of course. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, hope you all have a wonderful night. And we'll see you in about an hour on Lynch Talks with the Bookhouse Boys Twin Peaks pilot episode. Ooh. Have a good night. Peace.